Hello and welcome to another episode of our jump and run tutorial series using Godot Mono. In this episode we will learn how to make our player jump and how to make him move and I will show you how to tweak all the components of the movement so that it will feel right. So first of all let's add like a jump button to our input map and our key is gonna be W arrow up. And everyone who's watched my c -sharp basic tutorial series will know that I like to add a scripts folder, add a new file, input constants. And in here we have like, like our const jump. All right, let's start with making our player jump method called private void check jumping pass ourselves the delta value in case we'll need it and in here it's simple input dot is action just pressed and input constants dot jump so if we just pressed our jump button so w or arrow up then we'll simply add our jump velocity move dot y minus equals as a negative y value is always up it's our jump speed jump speed and this is gonna be i don't know we, we try something out yeah, so we also have to call check jump method check jumping method now as you can see <laughs> the jumping isn't the highest so i guess we gotta notch it up a little so you can see uh now the jump is working we will get to tweaking it in a bit check moving move speed Input dot x is action pressed. So we press our move left button and move dot x minus equals move speed. So and if we move right, we add our move speed. And so that we don't accelerate into infinity, infinity check moving. We say move dot x put zero. You can see the player can move and he can jump. Well, you can see the jump is a little bit floaty, like he stays. A long time in the air that I would suggest increasing the mass, increasing the jump speed as well. Now he's a lot shorter in the air. If you of course want to make him jump higher, depending on the game that you want to make, we have to increase the jump speed. That way he jumps significantly higher. But there is one thing that we haven't considered and that is that we can hit the jump button in mid-air. And this isn't exactly what we want, because then you could accelerate into infinity. We can do the following. We can add a raycast2d, which is simply an arrow that casts down, which means we can check whether uh, it intersects with anything. And only if there is like a ground right here at the tip, then we will allow a jump. We can say private raycast2d. Don't call it ground ray or something like that. Ground ray equals ground ray. Ground ray equals find node. Ground ray. So we can now simply say if ground ray dot is colliding, and if that is not the case, then we return. As we don't want to execute this function if it isn't colliding. So we simply return so that this block isn't even executed. It means that we finish the method right here. Now, as you can see, we can make our player jump and move. Yes, so that honestly doesn't feel too bad. It's um, the player is maybe a bit slow. In the video description, I have a link to a very nice video that describes how to make uh, jump curves mathematically so that you can adjust these values to your liking maybe a bit better like you can now move in the air um you may want this if not you can simply do this right here or with using this method round gray dot is colliding you could you could make the move speed a little bit slower um but i i think it's it's okay like this so now we also have to do the following action released jump and we learned that this is the and operator move dot y smaller than zero then we say move dot y divided by equals two what have we done here if now in the air so if our player is moving upwards our y speed has to be negative then we divide the y value by two so our y speed gets halved that leads us to more control over how long our jump should take so here i'm pressing it shortly now long you can see now I have like a great amount of control 
or a high, how high I want to, to make my player jump. You can see it's working quite well. I think it is quite a fun mechanic as of now. There are like still a few things that have to be tweaked. For example, uh, we now have a constant move speed, but I think a little bit of acceleration wouldn't be too bad. For that, I have defined this speed variable. For example, speed, speed plus equals 100 times delta. That way it will take one second for our speed to reach 100. Speed larger than, larger than our move speed, then our speed equals move speed so that we don't exceed this variable we can now create a boolean boolean pressing false and now if we press a button true then speed minus equal move speed so move speed times two uh, times delta so that it won't take too long to decelerate speed smaller than zero speed equals zero input dot is action just released left or action just released move right we also decelerate a little speed minus equals move speed divided by three so what if we do here we have we made this variable pressing which is only true if, uh, if either of those buttons are pressed so if it is false we decrease our speed so that we decelerate and if any of these buttons is released we also decelerate so that we have like we don't have like this constant speed even though we make a full turn as a player look at how this works now so uh acceleration is still a bit slow but you can see we have like this deceleration every time we stop we when we make a turn like our acceleration still has to be quite a bit faster to put this here i'm sorry uh, let's create a acceleration factor acceleration factor should be that. so now we can say all right accelerate a bit faster yeah i'm quite happy with how that turned out now we have like this little time that it takes for us to get to full speed makes it a bit more realistic there are of course many many tweaks that you can still make um, but i think it feels quite good as of now still a few more adjustments to be made um, but I think uh, it would be also nice if you yourself um, would sit down and think about how we, how could we improve this situation even further. There are still a few methods that I haven't discussed yet that are also very useful, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with that. I think we'll get to these methods which allow you to interpolate between two states in a couple of episodes that we can tweak our movement system even further. But I think for now it is quite great and in the next episode we will get to animations so that you can well make the player look in the right direction, make him move, have like a jump animation and yeah. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful. If you liked it uh, leave a like and I hope I see you the next time around. Goodbye.